I will say that, and I'll send an email out to you and all your parents to confirm, um, but I'll probably have to move tutoring to Tuesday tomorrow instead of Wednesday, sorry, um, but just so you can start preparing. Then also one of the papers you picked up is the new tracker for this week. It has like the state on it. This week, this full week will be like the last preparation we have for the ACT Aspire. Monday is of course a short day. We'll prep a little bit. Tuesday, it has a testing schedule. That's when you'll take most of your English Aspire tests. We'll have maybe 30 minutes together after that. And then Wednesday is your state testing for math. So some things that I've been noticing, especially like for my first hour, they show up to school with their Chromebooks completely dead. Stop doing that, especially for state testing. Like there is not enough loaners. There's not enough chargers to lend out. So if your Chromebook dies during your tests, you're kind of out of luck. Um, if all those loaners are already taken and things like that, like you need a charge, you need to show up with it charged already, but odds are it'll probably die and you need to have your charger with you. So there's that. Um, also, if you haven't gotten a real calculator yet from the bookstore that you could just borrow for free, then maybe have your other calculator I told you you'd have to use and you can probably best find it in the March 15th slideshow if you wanna like get that ready now. Whatever calculator you're gonna use on test day, like you need to start being familiar with it now. Okay, so that, this one is the one you have to use if you don't show up with one on test day. So yeah, as far as I excel goes, still keep track of your progress every day. There is going to be like a little competition between all the algebra classes about showing the most I excel growth. So the class that shows the most will have a donut party or some other sort of party. We haven't really decided, but that is if you show the most I excel growth compared to all the other classes. And that's growth. It's not necessarily how smart you are, just the more that you are growing. Last week on Friday, you had to turn in two things into Schoology. So just make sure that you did. I haven't graded them or put in missings yet, but that was the packet based on work shown and completion and uploading your tracker. Although I can pull up how much you've grown on my end for IXL, I'm not putting in a score unless you upload your tracker. And I know like there might be days where you didn't know how to fill it in or maybe you just got it that Thursday. Like I can understand that, but unless that's uploaded to Schoology, I'm not putting in your growth grade. So you have to be grown. Um, as far as I excel this week, you'll probably have Wednesday to work on it for the whole hour. But other than that, we're doing different things the rest of the week. So you still have to show growth now, but for week two. Questions, comments, concerns? All right, as far as the Kahoot goes, I just need you to be engaged, fully participating and taking notes as you go. So one of the papers you picked up on your way in is like the usual paper we use for Kahoots. I'll be walking around, making sure we're taking notes as we go. So should your Chromebook like die or something, use your phone for one for the Kahoot. Um, but you still just need to take notes. That's a major important thing. Take notes as you go. All right, so I'm going to press start. The winner, number one, will get a prize. All right, so find the median of this number set. 5, 17, 8, 22, 12, and 9. Find the median. Sorry if it's covered. Okay, so I know this is a unit one skill. It's been a while, but it's also like a major middle school skill. And like I said, the ACT is fire. There's a lot of middle school math, if I'm being honest with you. 
and they're still offering you a grade bump if you score high enough on it. So like it's very possible this could really be your jam. And the IHL mostly has been helping you review those middle schools. So um, how do you find the median of a data set? Or what is the median? Middle number of your data set. Once your data set is in order from least to greatest. So maybe that's what we forgot. I'm not sure. But it would have to be in numerical order. If I have six data points originally, I need to make sure I have six in my list. And then from there, you are finding your middle. So if I have an even number of data points, I should have two numbers in the middle. And what do I do once I have those two numbers in the middle? Because you can't have more than one median. So what do I do? What is my, my median is 10.5. How did I get that? Brian? Perfect. Add them up, divide them by two, or in other words, take the average of them. And then that does equal 10 and a half. Question on that? Uh, no. Okay, so then that's why this is the answer. And again, we did show you ways that you could just do that easily in Desmos, but you don't get Desmos on your test. There are really easy ways that if you had a graphing calculator that you could have it pull up all these statistics and all you have to do is enter your data set. Um, I would say that for whatever calculator you have, it's just a simple Google search, but of course it has to be before you actually take the test. So, like whatever your calculator is called, like a TI-84, type in whatever you want it to do, like how to find standard deviation or other statistics. It'll give you a step-by-step. -step. There's lots of videos out there. Here's like the other statistics it could give you, but that's just you knowing how to use your calculator. Questions on that? Or just know how to find the median of them. All right, here's the next one. So find the mode of this data set. Yeah. Sorry, oh no, it's okay. What'd you guys have to do? This is your panorama. Sure, yeah. Let me take your hat off. So we sat there for 25 minutes and once everyone takes their hats off. Weren't you guys outside? No, we were in the gym. Oh. Well, either way, I'm like, just let them have it on. Right. I don't know to see anybody. Okay, mode refers to the what of a data set? Most, most common. So yes, five is the mode. It is possible to not have a mode, like if they all show up the same amount, um, or to have more than one mode. But more so, I feel like they would actually ask questions like, how would adding this data point affect the mode or the median? Um, or removing a data point, how would that affect the mode or the median or the mean or whatever it's talking about? So just keep that in mind. If I added, say, the data point nine to this, then what would the mode be? So now I'm changing it. If I add the data point nine to my list, does the mode change? All right, headphones away, but I'll be listening. I'm getting a little concerned. If I add this data point and mode means most common, what happens to my mode? Does it change? It's still just five. It's five and nine. Five and nine both show up twice if I add that data point. 
So that could be like a good constructive response question. How does adding or removing a data point change this and why? So that's where you can touch on what the definition is. Is it increasing, decreasing, staying the same? Let's talk about all of that. All right, on to the next. Because I don't think they'll be necessarily that straightforward. So you have to be able to justify and explain. All right, 100 people were polled about their favorite pizza topping. How many prefer a meat topping? So which of these qualify as a meat topping? Pepperoni, is that a meat? Cheese, is that a meat? Sausage, what about supreme? Supreme is not a meat. That one has like bell peppers, olives, maybe some other stuff, but I don't recall there being meat necessarily. So it's just the pepperoni and the sausage, which using those colors, see what parts of the graph refer to it. 50% plus 15% and 65%. Now say they gave you parts of a whole, like they told you that out of 84 people surveyed, this many like pepperoni and this many like sausage and they ask you about like the percentage, then you would just divide it out of, out of however many they said. Hopefully you could figure that out too and how to convert like fractions to percentages and things like that. Some other like unit one and three skills. And I just made up these numbers. So like, that's why it doesn't refer to this at all. But hopefully you could answer questions like that. Like what percentage of these people like pepperoni and things like that. All right, moving on. Okay, what is the least common multiple of 12 and eight? Least common multiple. Between factors and multiples, I feel like people get those confused. Um, multiple of 12 would be like 12, 24, 36, 48, what else? 60. Okay, these are all multiples of 12. So it's like 12 times 1, 12 times 2, 12 times 3, 12 times 4. Okay. Now here's the multiples of 8. It goes 8, 16, 24, 32, 32, 32 and you can keep going. But what this one is asking is what's the least common multiple. So the smallest multiple that they have in common is what? Do they have 12 in common? Okay. Do they have 24 in common? So that's my least common multiple. All right, but stop the multiples if you need to. Find the one that they both have in common, that's the smallest. Compare that to factors. 
So like factors of 12 would be like six and two, which then break down into three and two. These would be like factors, things that multiply to give me 12 is different than multiples of 12. Factors of eight would be like two times four, one times eight, things that multiply to give me eight are factors. Multiples of eight are like eight, six, six, seven, four, three, three. Any questions? Mm -hmm. And then on to the next one. Find the greatest common factor of 42 and 28. Greatest common factor. So here is a foolproof way. I mean, if it's multiple choice on your test, then you could try to see like starting with the biggest number all the way down because you want like the greatest common factor. Um, you can start with the biggest all the way down and see which ones divide evenly into both numbers. Your greatest common factor can never be bigger than your smallest number though. So from that alone, I should not have picked blue or green because it can never be bigger than your smallest number. Um, but here's a foolproof way to get your GCF, your greatest common factor. Make a factor tree. What are two numbers that multiply to 42? Other than 42 and one? Any two numbers that multiply to 42, what are they? Two and twenty-one. So if you can't figure it out otherwise, I don't know. See, is it an even number? Then it should be divisible by two. Or see if it's divisible by three with your calculator. Like just kind of plug things in. Um, and you want to break it down to its prime factors. So if two is prime. It can't be broken down except for two and itself or one in itself. Twenty-one is not prime. What multiplies to give me twenty-one? So. And then seven and three are both prime. So these are the factors of 42, at least some of them. Um, but these are all the prime factors. Now for 28, make a factor tree for that. What are two numbers that multiply to give me 28? Two and 14, both prime. Two is prime, 14 is not. What multiplies 14? Two and seven. So seven was a good try. It was a good try. But when you compare these and what they have in common, both of these have a two. Um, both of these have a seven. Two times seven is 14. So that's the biggest number that can multiply to both of those numbers that they have in common. Okay, questions on that? So GCF, very important, just the factoring. Next one. Okay, find the volume of this rectangular prism. Oh, uh, I, I know these count. answers look weird, just do your best. I think it's supposed to be like centimeters cubed. I, I don't know why it looks so weird. That's centimeters cubed. This means centimeters cubed. <laughs> Okay, what's the <laughs> formula for volume of a rectangular prism? Uh, okay, good. Or length times width times height, same difference. Base times width times height, same difference. But you're multiplying all the dimensions, and I have 15 times 20 times 9. There's no rule that, like, this one has to be linked because it's the shortest or anything like that. Just put it in. And then use your calculator. Mean circle of, soft of, 
sine and multiply from sine and n. And my calculator looks like it signed out. So I'll just use my thing. But know that if you don't bring a calculator on test day, in order for it to actually multiply, you have to press the multiplication button. Like it doesn't just read the parentheses and multiplying for some reason. So just know that. 15 times 20 times 9 is 2,700. And since we're talking about volume, it has to be the unit cubed. We're basically saying 2,700 little cubes fit into this rectangular prism. Very much. They do expect you to know the formula for like volumes of like spheres. Triangular prisms, cylinders, cones, and maybe the Twitter makes a class card as well. All right, what is the volume of a rectangular prism with a 10.5 inches length, 5 inches in height, 3.8 in depth? Ten point five times five times three point eight. is 199.5 and since we're talking about volume it should be inches cubed um so it's like inches times inches times inches just like if it was x times x times x it becomes inches cubed all right uh, i think that's all we have time for so the winner ja oh just kidding ron you can come get a prize okay hold on Okay. 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 Okay.